So I represent um, uh, the Youth Affairs Council, which is the peak body. So we do a lot of research and advocacy on behalf of young people and also the youth sector and, and um, a lot of capacity building work as well. So training um, for the youth sector, but also for young people. So within the Youth Affairs Council, I represent uh, the rural side of things. So I travel all over rural and regional Victoria and do work that tries to ensure that young people have access to the resources and information that they need to be happy and healthy and so that they're not disadvantaged by their rurality. Um, our work is primarily funded through the Office for Youth um, and I'm going to just talk a little bit today about some research that we did back in 2000 and early 2013 that was released in late 2014 exploring the sexual and reproductive health inequalities faced by young people in rural and regional Victoria and also suggested some approaches to overcoming these equalities to be um, implemented by the state government office for youth. So why is it important um, to address um, sexual health inequalities? Basically the cost to individuals and communities of sexual health inequalities is significant and they're also preventable and avoidable and we have a responsibility to do something about it. Also when you look at sexual health and also um, violence against women, the economic cost to the community is huge. Why talk about young people in particular? So when you look at STIs, 75% of all STIs occur in young people. 15 to 29. Um, and in recent years, so in some research that's a little bit old now, but um, in between 2009 and 2012, there was a 20% increase in STIs overall amongst young people. Um, and there's also been, uh, between 1995 and 2005, there was a six-fold increase in chlamydia infections in particular. And there's also been a steady increase in HIV um, and syphilis infections, which is concerning because, well, it, it's something, um, HIV in particular has been pretty well controlled in Australia um, since the 80s, but um, it can be a sign that people are not practicing safe sex or that they're not using contraception or protection consistently. So then when we look at rural and regional um, young people, there are huge disparities between metropolitan and rural young people. So the rate of STIs amongst adolescents has been consistently higher in rural and regional Victoria since 2004 when the Victorian Child and Adolescent Monitoring System, VCAMS, figures were first gathered. So in 2010, the rate of infections per 1,000 adolescents was 4.2 in rural and regional Victoria compared to 2.3 in metropolitan Melbourne and rate, with rates appearing to be higher in inner regional Victoria. So chlamydia again is the, probably the, the main concern with chlamydia infections increasing in all rural regions and rural divisions between 2009 and 2011. The cause of this is complex but a lot, a lot of it can be pinned to um, knowledge and behaviours, misconceptions around safe practice, around the pill and how, how to use contraception effectively. And then also within relationships, there can be, people can have certain ideas about being in a monogamous long-term relationship um, and trust and um, testing and things like that. Other areas of concern are around fertility rates, which look at the rates of births. So in rural and regional Victoria, the fertility rate is two to three times higher in rural and regional areas than in Melbourne and follows a clear pattern whereby fertility increases with increasing remoteness. So young motherhood is not, not always a bad thing but it, it can be a concern because young mothers can also become more vulnerable. 
to other other things such as you know not 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 um, having access to services and support and education. So other areas of concern outlined in the paper that we did were around unwanted sexual relationships um, and violence against women. So women who have experienced violence are more likely to have unwanted pregnancies um, and miscarriages and terminations. And approximately a quarter of sexually active young people report experiencing unwanted sex. So it's, it is a huge concern. All right, so um, one of the, another contributing factors is inequalities around access to contraception, um, education. So whilst schools must provide some sex education, um, young people report that it's not necessarily meeting their needs. Um, and also then having access to information support and advice, um, particularly around sexual health, relationships, and then also diversity. So for same-sex attracted and gender diverse, having access to the kind of information they need can be a real barrier. I think just another thing to consider for rural and regional young people is the other barriers that they can face around um, being isolated, um, not having privacy to to talk about safe sex with someone that they trust or having access to a GP, transport, employment, education, income and gender. They can all be other determinants that can be barriers to um, a safe sexual health. Another thing to consider is that having access to um, emergency contraception, fertility counselling and terminations for young women who find themselves um, facing an unwanted pregnancy and to have support with with that process. So a lot of in, a, in the report we had one worker talk about feeling that a lot of young people, young women in the area were sort of being shipped off to Melbourne by themselves and that was quite a traumatic experience. Um, another consideration is around boredom and drugs and alcohol which can which is often what leads young people to um, have unsafe sex. So in terms of recommending a response to these issues, um, we look, recommended following the Centre for Excellence in Rural Sexual Health, a, a, um, health Promotion Approach. I won't go into that too much. Um, it's all in the report. Um, but our specific recommendations to the Office for Youth were around supporting young people to become community leaders themselves to promote sexual health and respectful relationships. In time after time, young people report when it comes to sexual health that they prefer to hear from someone that's closer to their own age. And so there's also, these are in no um, order by the way, they're, they're sort of all equally considered important. So we also need to support the implementation of long-term sustainable whole of school and whole of community approaches to sexual health and um, sexual violence in every region of Victoria. We, are, we need to um, address the barriers to practicing safe sex and encourage young people to get tested regularly for STIs. So what that might look like is working with rural businesses to make sure, uh, and supermarkets and pharmacies to make sure that um, purchasing contraception is easier for young people and to promote things like the Test Me um, kits, which was initiated by the Melbourne um, Sexual Health, I can't remember the exact name now, but basically young people can get online, they can order a test um, and that they can do in the post, which I think doesn't, it doesn't replace the need for one-on-one -on -one support with a GP that you trust, but it, it's another option. So to, pr to support the development of a statewide pregnancy information service, with the capacity to assist women in all rural, regional and remote communities, to consult with um, Centre for Excellence, to apply findings from their pilot programs and other rural settings, and to advocate for a consistent national curriculum of sexuality education in secondary schools, including independent and Catholic schools. 
I think also what's important to consider there is the young people who are not in school, who have disengaged from education and looking at ways that they can get access to um, some, some information and support around their health. A recommendation that came out through the report was to invest in better data collection. So including um, asking young people about how they use contraception rather than just whether or not they do. So in your pack, you should have got a little USB, which has got my presentation on it, I understand. And that's got a link, that's a hyperlink to the report. So if you want some more information, please have a look. One thing I did also just want to m mention that's not in the report, which I think is very important to note, is that um, we, need a, we need more investment in support for same-sex attracted and gender diverse people and for initiatives like the Hay Project, Healthy Equal Youth, which is supporting same-sex attracted young people um, to do that sort of peer-led work across rural and regional Victoria. And also to start, start doing the prevention work earlier in the middle years, because um, young people are becoming sexually active earlier and I think it's important to start early. We've got um, YERP, which is our Youth Engagement Resource Project, which has got a whole lot of information on there for services on how to work with young people, what that should look like, but also for young leaders on how to be more effective change agents in their community. Um, and also we've got our Code of Ethical Practice. So if you're needing some resources, please come and see me. That's it. Thank you.